What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. Over the past week, our attention has been glued to the Kursk operation, an event that has sent ripples throughout Russian society and government. Today, however, we shift our focus to a less discussed but equally critical aspect. Why no Russian wants to protect Kursk region? No civilians and not even the army itself. This missing piece provides a profound insight into the actual state of Russia's internal dynamics, revealing not only the unusual relationship between society and the government, but also the stark realities of public sentiment during times of national crisis. In this video, we will drive deep into the total absence of the to the arms, the enemy is attacking effect in Russia, a phenomenon typically observed in other nations during similar crises. We will uncover the broader implications of this absence and what it suggests about the current and future trajectory of Russian society. In times of crisis, nations often witness a surge in public unity, commonly known as a rally around the flag effect. This phenomenon is not merely a social or cultural response, no. It is deeply rooted in the fabric of human evolution. Historically, survival has depended on collective action. Tribes or communities that failed to unite in the face of external threats were often unable to withstand such pressures, leading to their eventual extinction. This instinct for group cooperation in the face of danger has been a successful survival strategy throughout human history, ensuring that the group rather than the individual is prioritized during times of conflict. In modern times, this instinct manifests in various ways, such as citizens volunteering to defend their country or showing overwhelming support for their government during wartime. This collective behavior is often celebrated as a mark of patriotism, but is fundamentally an extension of our survival instincts. Recent examples include the wave of Ukrainian volunteers joining their armed forces in the spring of 2022, and the mass return of Israel citizens to their homeland following the Hamas attacks. Initially, these movements are driven by voluntarily action, but as the conflict persists, governments often find it necessary to enforce support through more co coercive measures. This is typically reflected in a surge of uh, government approval ratings, even in democracies, where diverse opinions are usually more prevalent. However, Russia's current situation deviates significantly from this pattern. Despite the serious threat posed by Ukrainian incursions into Russian territory, the expected wave of patriotism and national unity has not materialized. There has been no mass enlistment, no surge of support for the government, and no significant shift in public sentiment. This uh, rally around the flag syndrome is notably absent raising critical questions about the state of Russian society and its relationship with the government during this period of crisis. One of the most striking aspects of the current situation in Russia is the widespread apathy among the public. Despite the gravity of this situation, Ukrainian forces occupying large parts of Russian territory and over 120,000 Russian displaced as refugees, there has been little to no public outcry. The media, which often plays a pivotal role in shaping public perception and rallying national support, has largely remained silent. The concept of ignore the problem and it will go away is vividly apparent in Russia today. The Russian public, particularly those outside the immediate conflict zones, are making concerted efforts to avoid confronting the reality of the invasion. This collective disengagement from the unfolding disaster is not only surprising, but it is also deeply concerning. While the government-controlled mainstream media has predictably avoided extensive coverage of the crisis, what is more alarming is the minimal response from the social media and other platforms typically associated with more independent or critical voices. Even on platforms like VK, the equivalent of Facebook, where one might expect at least some degree of engagement with such a significant national event, 
mentions of coarse cars, spars and largely overshadowed by content that is far from the seriousness of the situation. Instead, the focus remains on entertainment, celebrity gossip and trivial controversies as if the country were not facing a major crisis. This dissonance between the severity of the situation and the public's response is not a merely a coincidence. It is the result of a deliberate and sustained government strategy. For years, and with increasing intensity during the war, the Russian government has systematically discouraged public engagement with national issues. The prevailing message has been clear. The war efforts is the government's responsibility, and the public should not involve themselves in it. This strategy has been reinforced throughout a combination of propaganda and repression, ensuring that those who might be inclined to question or challenge the official narrative are either silenced, marginalized, or even jailed. The Russian government's approach to managing public perception of the war has been alarmingly effective. By systematically discouraging public engagement with national issues, the authorities have created an environment where indifference and detachment are the new norm. This has been achieved throughout a blend of propaganda which paints the war as a distant concern irrelevant to the daily lives of ordinary citizens, and repressions which swiftly deals with those who dare to question or criticize the government's actions. As a result, the Russian public has largely accepted the narrative that the war is something that happens somewhere else, a background event that does not require their attention or concern at all. This detachment is further reflected in the country's economic and social life. Despite the ongoing conflict, many Russians are enjoying higher wages and increased job opportunities, particularly in industries related to the war effort. This economic boom, however, is built on a foundation of denial and destruction. The government has successfully promoted the idea that life is not only normal, but better than before, encouraging people to focus on their personal prosperity, rather than the larger national crisis. Restaurants are full, social events are well attended, and there is a sense of normalcy that hides the seriousness of the situation. The effectiveness of this strategy is perhaps best illustrated by the public's response to, you, to the Ukrainian incursion to Russian territory. Rather than rallying to defend their country, the majority of Russians have chosen to ignore the conflict completely, altogether. This is not due to a lack of information or awareness, but is the result of a deliberate choice to prioritize personal well-being over national concerns. The government's messaging has been so effective that many Russians have now viewed the war as an abstract issue, something that is happening out there and does not require their involvement. This, detach this detachment has allowed the government to maintain control and avoid the kind of mass mobilization or public unrest that might threaten its stability. The long-term consequences of this widespread public detachment are potentially severe. By successfully detaching the public from the realities of the war, the Russian government has isolated itself with little to no support from the very people it governs. This isolation is particularly evident in the growing discontent among the more politically engaged segments of society, such as pro-war bloggers and their followers. These groups were among the few who expected a strong and decisive response from the government following the Ukrainian incursion, and their disappointment could have serious consequences. The government's reluctance to engage in its usual nuclear blackmail is another significant shift that underscores its current vulnerability. For years, the Russian leadership has used the threat of nuclear weapons as a key element of its strategy to maintain power and project strength on the global stage. However, in the face of a real and immediate threat, this rhetoric has noticeably diminished. The silence from Putin and his top officials on this front suggests that a reluctance to escalate the conflict further, revealing that the government's previous statements may have been more about showing off its strength rather than the actual intent to use it. This change in strategy reflects a deeper recognition of the limits of the government's power and control. 
The Ukrainian invasion has not provided the expected opportunities for consolidation and expansion. Instead, it has exposed the government's weaknesses and the fragility of its grip on the country. The public's indifference, combined with the growing discontent among the government's most vivid supporters, possesses a significant challenge to the government's authority. If this trend continues, it could lead to a significant erosion of the government's control with potentially far-reaching implications for Russia's future. The government's attempt to downplay the significance of the war and maintain a sense of normalcy has also resulted in a dangerous level of complacency among the public. By convincing the public that the war is not a pressing concern, the government has effectively undermined any potential for collective action or national unity. This could have serious consequences in the situation if the situation continues to evolve. Without a united public willing to support the government's efforts, Russia may find itself increasingly isolated and vulnerable, both domestically and internationally. The events surrounding the Kursk operation and its aftermath have uncovered the complex and troubling dynamics within Russian society and its government. The absence of a rally-around-the-flag effect, the continuous public apathy, and the government's deliberate effort to suppress national awareness all point to a deeper crisis of legitimacy and control. While the government's strategy of detachment and destruction has been effective in maintaining short-term stability, it has also created significant long-term risks. As the situation continues to evolve, the Russian government faces a critical juncture. The path it chooses in the coming months will determine not only the outcome of the current conflict, but also the future trajectory of the nation. The decision to suppress public engagement and avoid acknowledging the gravity of the situation may provide temporary respite, but it also leaves the government increasingly isolated and vulnerable to internal and external pressures. Genuine public engagement and national unity may prove to be the most significant missed opportunity of this crisis. Without a supportive and engaged public, the government's ability to navigate the challenges ahead will be severely compromised. The future of Russia depends on whether its leaders can recognize the need for change and take steps to rebuild the trust and unity that have been eroded over the past decade. The stakes are high and the choices made now will shape the nation's destiny for years to come. Well, there you have it, guys. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed today's episode. If you wish to support my work, there are links down below. And if you miss ridiculous Russian propaganda, it will be on my Patreon. You can find all the links once again down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Sway. We do not believe in